What's up everybody? This is John from Best Life Business here and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to build your ideal customer profile or your customer avatar. This is an extremely important topic for anyone uh, regardless of whether you're a beginner or whether you're experienced it's something that you really need to be focused on but in the early stages of your business in particular you know there's often a propensity to start doing things and you know trying to get momentum you know being very busy and active um, but before you do anything like that, you really have to get a proper understanding and a good sense of who your target audience is. So I would highly recommend that you spend time on this, you know, do your research, um, you know, really focus hard on it because it will help you get your success that bit quicker. Um, it will save a lot of time and a lot of energy, you know, reaching out to the wrong people, who, you know, essentially people who are never going to buy from you. So uh, do put time into this. In the video, I'm going to cover about five key points. Um, I like to keep it simple. I'll, I'll kind of address five kind of things that I myself have uh, used in creating my own avatar. You know, my, my niche is personal development and, you know, starting a, an online business. So I've had to do my own due diligence to try and figure out who the, my ideal customer is. Um, and it's evolved. You know, it's, it's not something that it's not a one and done situation. You've got to do this on an ongoing basis. So one of the first things I would say is, you know, when you start doing um, customer profile building, don't think that just because you you think you have your ideal customer profile built today, that it's not going to change in six months time or in a year's time or, or, or further beyond that. Um, you know, I would say you have to revisit your profile and update it on a regular basis based on trends, on user behavior, on, on things that you're seeing online, you know, customer behavior changes all the time. So this is something you have to be mindful of because as your customer changes, your business is going to have to change and you yourself are going to have to adapt and evolve um, because that has a direct imp impact on, you know, your reach, your level of engagement with them, your influence and ultimately what sales and what revenue you're going to generate as a business at the end of the day. So in the video, I'm going to cover five po points. Um, I'll keep them fairly simple, um, but by all means, if you have any feedback, come back to me with questions, you know, subscribe to the channel and um, you know, you'll see more videos like this coming over time. So point number one, guys, is doing your research. This is the discovery phase, I suppose you would call it, where before you actually uh, start to, to build your customer profile, you have to really understand your industry first, uh, the industry at large, I guess, you know, what is trending, what are people actually looking at, what products are selling, what's not selling, you know, those types of things can, can give you a very good understanding and give you a lot of early information that you need to start to build that profile effectively. Um, you know, just taking my own niche as an example, which is, uh, you know, online marketing, personal development, um, key example of, of someone that I follow is uh, Russell Brunson, who's the founding member of ClickFunnels. Um, you know, which is an extremely popular software. Some of you may, may be aware of it or using it. Um, you know, I can very quickly tell the type of people that I should be targeting just by looking at Russell's social media channels, you know, his, uh, his, all the content that he puts out online. I can see the type of people who are actually engaging with that. So it gives me a sense of who I'm actually, who I actually should be targeting. Um, others then would be the likes of Tony Robbins or Dean Graziosi or, you know, some of the industry leaders in personal development, um, maybe other salespeople like uh, Eric Worry or um, you know Frank Kern. These are people who you can quite quickly search for if you're not familiar with them. Um, but they're leaders, I guess, and you know my target audience I know are following them, so I can quickly find out where my target audience are and get some information, I suppose, about what they're doing online. So I'd say do some of your own research. Um, you know, whatever niche you're actually in, find out who are the main influencers, who are the main brands, learn from them and determine who's actually engaging with them online. Another thing as well is what type of content are they engaging with? You know, uh, that will quickly kind of tell you what sort of pain points people have or what challenges they might have. So this is all kind of early stage stuff that you can do to get some key information to start to build your customer profile. Point number two, guys, is social media insights tools and various other tools that you can use online. Um, a lot of them are free tools, which are really, really powerful in terms of giving you some key information about your customer, pro um, you know, to build that profile. 
Examples would include the likes of Google Trends, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. You might be using it extensively already. If you're not, I suggest you use it because it can tell you a whole range of information, um, pr primarily around demographics, about any type of industry online, you know, about products that are selling at a global level, um, which give you a lot of insights and information about your customer. Others would include uh, social media tools like, the, for instance, Facebook Insights. Um, if you've got a Facebook ad account already, um, you can set one up for free. You don't have to be running a, an ad campaign, which is the great thing. You can actually avail of this tool um, free of charge to give you a lot of data points about your customer. So it will tell you everything from you know, their, their age to their location to the type of interests they have. Really key information uh, to help you build up your customer profile. Others you know, would include um, things like Hootsuite, if any of you are using it for social media management. There are lots of other free tools that you can search for online, which will um, quickly help you to uh, ascertain information about your target audience. The Google Ad Planner is another one. Um, so you know, doing keyword research is really, really uh, important as well, because that, will, that, that is probably the one thing that will tell you more about your customer's interests um, or their challenges or pain points than any other tool. So do some research on it. I would suggest you know, use those tools that I've mentioned and maybe look for some others as well that will start to help you get the information that you need. Point number three is using Google Analytics. You may be wondering why am I separating Google Analytics from the tools I previously mentioned. Analytics is such a powerful source of information and it really warrants a discussion in its own right. For any of you that are running a website or a blog, and I'm sure a number of you are, make sure that you've got Google Analytics set up correctly um, so that you can track the performance of the site and start to really kind of get a sense of who's engaging with your content over time um, you know, and what type of content is working best. That source of information will really help you build out your customer profile and give you a lot of rich data about uh, who you should be targeting. Um, on your site. It's not going to tell you immediately, like you'll need a number of months of information of you know traffic driving to the site and of testing various things and adding new content before you kind of get to paint the picture of who your ideal customer is. Make sure you, that you've also got uh, demographics enabled on uh, Google Analytics. There's a way to do this and you could just simply Google a, a tutorial on how to do it. Um, having that enabled will give you more rich and, and kind of uh, deeper insights into where people are, are uh, visiting the site from, their age profile, a lot of kind of key demographic information that will help you again uh, to build the, the customer profile. Um, using things like affinity categories and in-market insights as well in Google Analytics will give you more information again about uh, who the people are that are visiting your site. So over time, it is a really, uh, really important tool to be using to, um, to supplement whatever information you've got in your customer avatar profile. Point number four is what do they care about? This is much more at the heart of the, the reason and the rationale to build a customer avatar. You know, you, you've been through the discovery phase, you've done a lot of research and information gathering using those various tools and, and you know, different resources. But ultimately, what is it you're trying to achieve? Um, and fundamentally, there are two key questions that you should answer and keep it as simple as this, in, in my opinion. Um, what is it that they're actually interested in or what is it they're looking for? And what's the perceived roadblock and how do you help them overcome it? So at the heart of it, that, that is ultimately what you're trying to achieve by building a customer avatar. Um, you know, whether it be through your website, through your emails, through social media or whatever media that you're actually using, any content that you create, try and frame it in such a way that you're answering those questions um, because that's what's going to resonate most with your target audience. Um, you know, you're trying to meet, meet in, in our, our marketing efforts, we're trying to meet people on an emotional level. So if you can answer the question that solves the problem that they have, uh, that's where you're going to kind of meet with most success. So keep it as simple as possible when you're building a customer avatar. Um, you know, keep those two key questions in mind and try and answer them as clearly and succinctly as possible every time you do generate some content, because that is ultimately what's going to get you more success and build you more momentum. Um, you know, as you go through. Finally, point number five is putting your avatar profile together. My recommendation is that you use one master document to do this. 
Um, there are of course templates that you can download online if it makes it easier for you, but make sure that you've got one core document that you're using. Remember, you're going to be pulling information from a lot of different sources, um, like we mentioned in the video earlier. So make sure that you've got one place that the information is concise and that it's easy for you to see each time you revisit the document, what your profile looked like. Um, and, and also any updates that you need to make, make sure that, that you, you track them in this document as well so that you can see the evolution of the customer profile over time. And that can in itself can actually be, uh, be helpful in terms of your own learning and understanding of who the customer actually is. So that's the five points I wanted to cover in this video, guys, about building a customer avatar. I hope you found it useful. Um, just to recap a little bit, you know, it, it really is a, an ongoing thing that you've got to be doing. So those are the five points that I wanted to cover in this video about building a customer avatar. I hope you found it a little bit useful. Just to summarize, building your avatar is not something that you can do quite quickly, as you can imagine. Um, it's something that takes time and commitment and you should be revisiting it at least, uh, I would say, once every few months. You know, keep going back to that document and updating it with any new information that you might have. Listening to your target audience online is extremely important. So any feedback that you might get in terms of commentary on your social media posts or you know, feedback on your website or whatever it might be, you've got to use that uh, consistently to build a more robust and a more granular profile uh, about your customer. So make sure that you're, you are taking all of that on board. Keep yourself updated, uh, you know, and educated and aware of what's happening in the industry. You know, kind of keep your finger on the pulse in terms of trends and things that are changing. Because if you can use that information and see things coming further down the road, that can actually be very advantageous to your business. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next